day. Welcome back. And if this is the first time you have joined me, hello. My name's Nina and this is the Goddess Diaries. Um, and today I am going to share some of my favourite books with you. My witch books. The books that I am in the process of reading just now that are not on Kindle. Got loads on Kindle. You know what we for you wake up during the night if you do, so you don't want to put the light on, you just lie there and flick through your phone or your iPad. Um, so these are some of the books that I absolutely love, some of them that I'm reading just now, and other ones, a couple that everybody should have. But first I want to show you something. A couple of weeks ago we went to see a house, just to see it, um, and right at the bottom of the drive of the house there is a loch. Um, for anybody watching don't know what a loch is, um, it's a big bit of water. <laughs> it's like a lake but it's not. <laughs> um, so I was looking at the stones, it wasn't like a beach, it's not, quite a lot of the lochs have got a lot of beaches and things but this one is quite rocky. But there was a huge wish stone, absolute huge wish stone. Um, but it was on Mabin when we went. And I was standing on the wish stone and I was calling in the goddesses and I was doing a wee bit of a ritual um, and asking for the goddess to come and work with me and for the thing that I was doing at the time. Um, and when I was finished and I looked down to step off, this stone was right at my foot. So, if you can, can you, oh, there we go. You see that stone? Oh, it's like I just managed to get zoned into it and then, there, you see the shape of it, it's like, it's like a goddess isn't it, it's like a triple goddess, you know what it reminded me of, um, oh it's downstairs, I have a goddess that I bought from um, Star Child in Glastonbury and it was like, it's like a tall goddess and this is what this reminded me of. So I was just like, okay, I hear you. You hear me. And that's all I need to know. Um, so I have it with me all the time. I absolutely love it. It's just, it may be a stone to you, but it's a sign from the goddess to me. So that's not going anywhere. It's just because I picked my book up and it was sitting on top of my book. Right, so I'm obsessed with Glastonbury, guys. I don't know about you. I've Probably got a couple of vlogs here and one when I was just at Glastonbury not that long ago. I haven't put up. I'll probably re-edit it. There's a lot of things in it that I maybe don't want in it, but I'll re-edit it. So I love Glastonbury. We go down there any chance that I can get. Um, so I buy things, like books, things that relate to Glastonbury. So these are some of the books, a couple of the books that I bought when I was in Glastonbury. Right, so this one is called Priestess of Avalon. Priestess of the Goddess, and it was written by Cathy Jones. It is an absolutely fabulous book. This is what it looks like. Um, and it's a journey of transformation within the sacred landscape of Glastonbury of Avalon. The Lady of Avalon is the goddess who dwells on the Isle of Avalon, the mysterious otherworldly paradise which lies far across the waters beyond the mists. A, fe a priestess or priest of Avalon is one who devotes himself, sorry, or her to the service of the Lady of Avalon, to her sacred land and to her people. This is an ancient yet ever new spiritual calling which speaks to many women and men in the present day, for she is the great goddess, the missing piece of the picture, the divine feminine and the lady of our hearts. So join Cathy Jones as she takes us on this adventure of Avalon. Okay, she's lived in Avalon for 30 years and she wants to share her experiences with us. Um, I won't divulge too much of the book. I've actually not long started reading it and I made the... I'm one of these page benders. I'm a page bender, what can I say? Um, I'll, I do have bookmarks. I was in Happy Glastonbury and the wee shop that's there 
at the square. Um, and I've had books bookmarks for them. Like when I buy things, they put it in your bag, and I use them. But they're and it's in a book somewhere. I can actually see it sticking out of one of one of them. <laughs> um, so this is this book. This I love. So I started reading that, and it's really good. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't just pick up one book and then that's it. Read till the end. I've always got more than one. It's depending on the mood that you're in, isn't it? Right. So. The reason why I make these videos about my favourite tarot cards, my favourite books and different things because people ask me all the time so I thought I may as well just make a video and share, okay? So the other one that I love and I have page bent that as well. <laughs> I've not I've only just started doing this one. This one is called Holy Grail and a Holy Thorn, Glastonbury and the English Imagination and it's by Richard Taman. Okay, so this book... Holy Grail and Holy Thorn explores ex my, tongue, my tongue's busy today explores the legends of King Arthur and Joseph of Arimathea at Glastonbury and how their influence has been felt from medieval to modern times. Joseph was said to have built at Glastonbury the first church in Christendom which made it um, a centre of medieval pilgrimage um, so it goes on to explain his travels over and uh, about the Holy Thorn that stands in St John's Church, or chapel, I can't remember what they call it, uh, on just at the High Street, although that is like, that that is like not the original one, uh, and one of them got damaged up at Weirial Hill, you know, so anyway, this is but all this, because I, I get me started talking about Glastonbury, I can just make a video on Glastonbury all alone, just that subject, and probably make lots of videos about Glastonbury, anyway, so this is this one. I love it. So far it's really good. And I like to hear, I um I practice witchcraft. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I'm not a Christian. But I love to hear what everybody's experience is with Glastonbury and why they come, what draws them there and what keeps them coming back or what stops them from leaving and staying there. And I'm jealous because that's what I want to be. But another book that I bought when I was there is... Thorsten's Way of the Goddess by Anne-Marie Gallagher. Okay, so this book, again, I have... I did pick it up and read a couple of the pages, but really it was just the introduction. So I really need to get back into that and read that. Um, this is Discover a New Way of Life. From ancient times, both men and women have honoured the goddess. This book is a comprehensive guide to... Goddess Spirituality, which recounts its history and origins and explains why the goddess is so relevant to us in the 21st century. Um, so it is a guide to goddess, how to find your own patron goddess, way to discover your goddess within, and goddess magic and rituals. So it's all there, guys. Everything there, it takes you through how to cast a circle, um, different spells, how to call the goddess, whatever goddess, to work with you. Um, gosh, there's lots. How to make... Oh, they haven't got this far in the book. How to make a sacred web symbol. It's just amazing. Oh, actually, here I don't need to really read that. <laughs> I think I'll be putting everything else aside and reading, getting right into this, because this is actually really good. So there's different exercises and different things in it. But goddess elements, keeping the festivals, different sabbats. So there we go. It's not a tremendously fancy cover, but it's really colourful and it just stood out to me and I was like, I'm having that. So um, I actually, there's quite a few bookshops in Glastonbury and I have bought books from all of them. So I, I don't want to call out anyone in case I've picked up the book, the wrong one. And I mentioned the wrong one, but anyway, they'll all probably share everything similar anyway. This one, I knew there was another one there. Right, this one, I bought this one from Charlesville Gardens. We had an amazing day in Charlesville Gardens when we went down, my husband and I. So if you've watched any of the other videos, you'll have seen Graham, the bearded Viking. Um, so that, we went in there and it was great because it was a lovely day and it was so quiet. And um, we did some Reiki, we did some meditation, we just sat and chilled out and just sat there for ages. It was fabulous. I went into the wee shop and I bought this. So this one's called Avalon Within. I am loving this. I mean, this one is just really speaking to my soul just now. And this is the one I'm reading. I've not long started, again, page bender. I've not long started reading that, as you can see. Um, 
So this one's called A Sacred Journey of Myth, Mystery and Inner Wisdom. Is Inner Wisdom by... Yeah, I'm not going to pronounce this name. I'm going to just hold the book up and let you see it for yourself and then you can write it down. Should I have a wee go? No, I'm not even going to. So there you go, that's the author. I don't want to do an injustice by saying somebody's name wrong, right? So, but it's an amazing book. So this book is set forth on a sacred, sacred quest, journey to the legendary Isle of Avalon and experience the magic, mysteries and mysticism that have inspired women throughout the ages. So this gorgeous person, she's the founder of the Avalonian tradition, invites you on a unique spiritual path of healing and personal revelation built upon hold on I've, I've got very focals guys I've got to hold my head the right way or else I can't read things um, built upon the beloved Avalon mythology connect with the goddesses of Avalon through guided journeys and powerful rituals explore Glastonbury's sacred landscape with eight pages of gorgeous colour photographs oh Oh, so there is. I haven't got to that part yet. Um, doo -doo -doo. Develop legendary Avalonian skills such as the sight and the art of glamour to heal wounds of the soul and unlock the sacred wisdom at the core of your being. Drawing on Celtic mythology, Arthurian legend, Druidic lore, exploring the way of the priestess as alluded to in Marion Zimmer Bradley's In the Mists of Avalon. Oh my goodness, I'm obsessed with that film. The Avalonian path empowers women everywhere to transform their lives by seeking the goddess and the sovereign self within. So how fabulous is that? Um, and at the beginning, when I was reading it, it was like the story of Keridwen and Keridwen's son and the whole journey of all the shape-shifting that she was doing um, until she ate the person that stole the gift from her son that she was brewing up and had to rebirth them and pass them on, so don't want to spend, don't want, if you've not heard that story that's why I'm not going into too much detail because it's really great so go and look up the story of Keridwin if you haven't already, or buy the book buy the book, um, so that's that, so this was fabulous this book and I got that one, I mean you can get it um, I haven't looked obviously because I've already got it but I'm sure that you'll be able to find it um, online somewhere if you're not anywhere near Glastonbury, if you've not went to Glastonbury, go, but as this book mentions, The Mists of Avalon, oh my gosh, if you've never seen it, you need to see it. I am obsessed with that movie. I have watched it, I don't know how many times, I have it on DVD and it is just phenomenal. And I end up, I think I got a bottle off um, Amazon actually. Um, so if you haven't watched The Mists of Avalon, you need to get it. And this book is just all about the goddess and all about Avalon and the Lady of the Lake. And I love it. Right, so that's the ones. So these are the other three. So, right, so um, this book, I, I sometimes, when it, depending on who I'm speaking to, it's easier for me to say that I'm Wiccan. I am not fully Wiccan. I don't, I'm not into organised religion. I'm not, whether you believe Wiccan is a, organisation or not or whatever um, I do love a lot most of the laws so I would say I do follow a lot of the Wiccan laws um, and I love I love everything I do love everything about it I just would probably call myself more a witch than I would Wiccan um, but I do love Wicca and I do love a lot about Wicca um, and I love the King of the Witches I love The King of the Witches. So this book is by Gerald Gardner, who I'm completely obsessed about. I love him so much and it's a shame. I would love to have met him. I would love to have just sat and had a conversation with him. Um, in fact, I probably wouldn't have even had a conversation with him. I would probably have just sat like, like that and just listened to everything that he had to say and I'm sure he would have satisfied my need. Um, this is a great book um, for anyone who doesn't know the story. When he started kind of coming out and discussing the story, discussing Wicca, discussing witchcraft and bringing it into the, the mainstream. Um, he brought, this is when roughly, when about then is when he brought out this book. It, when I, I've had this book for a wee while, 
um, and I tried to kind of get into it and it was really hard to get into it because it's written obviously back then and the way that we speak now is not the way that we spoke we don't speak now the way they speak then, kind of, you get what I mean, you know, they just kind of said things differently. Um, but I obviously wasn't in the right frame of mind to start reading it, but anyway, I've just started reading it. Another one that I've just started. I'm a nightmare, who does that? Like, let me know if you do the same, because it's a nightmare, isn't it? I'm terrible for doing that. I've almost got a problem about six or seven books on the go, maybe even more. Um, and I do get round to finishing them, I do, but however. So this is a really good book. Um... It doesn't really, so far it isn't as if it really tells me a lot about him as a person. I, I would love to get a, like an autobiography of him so that, I mean I do know a lot of his story but I would love to read all his story as well. So this one is The Meaning of Witchcraft by Gerald Gardner and I, that was a struggle for me to get that. I ended up getting it on the internet and I think I paid probably too much for it to be honest with you but it's Gerald Gardner. You've got to buy it, haven't you? Right, now, if you've not read this book, if you've not been unleashed or untamed and you're not unapolog unapologetic yet, why not? You need to read this. So this is by Lisa Lister. I've spoke to quite a few people and I've mentioned this book to them. They're like, I've not even heard of that. And I'm like, seriously? Wake the witch, wake the witch. Lisa is such a beautiful person. Don't know her personally. Um, but I love this book. I love... Do you know what I love about her? And this is one I've actually nearly finished. <laughs> you can see this is all I've got left to read. Um, I've got nail decals. I'm using nail decals. Um, and one of my business cards. As a bookmark. Anything goes. Whatever's lying there I'll use. Um, this is just... A lot of this is... She'll give you some... She'll give you some, like, kind of rituals. She'll... But it's her story. A lot of it is her story into witchcraft about, you know, I think she's like third generation, maybe even more. Um, Ramon, Romanian, Gyp but anyway, I'm sure it's Gypsy. I won't, I won't say Romanian because I can't remember now. Um, but so she's like a Gypsy witch. Um, and it's been passed down a lot to her. She is just amazing. She's all about the divine feminine. She's all about pussy power. She's all about get your kit off and stick your legs up in the air and get your moon bathing. <laughs> she's, she's my sense of humour. She's got, and I, I think she, I think she would have quite a wicked sense of humour. Um, and I think we would just laugh our heads off if we ever got in the same room, honestly. Um, I've got quite a wicked sense of humour as well. And you've got to learn to laugh at yourself, haven't you? You've got to, like, you know, You've got to let go all inhibitions when you're into any kind of craft and you're into witchcraft. You need to have. It's it's great. I went when I before I started really throwing myself into witchcraft. I was very uptight and don't look at me and you know um, not saying much. Very very prudish. That 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 was in the outside. That my inside I wasn't like that and I knew I wasn't like that. But that was the person that I was portraying. And the more I really got into the craft and the more I really threw myself into it, the more confident I became. And now I couldn't care less. I, I really don't, you know. And, and it's so freeing. It's so freeing to reach that, point, that point in your life. Right, so anyway, um, I could talk about that forever again. Um, I'm so bad at going off on tangents. Right, so this is the last book that I'm going to show you just now. I have got so many books. Us witches love books. I have books on my Kindle. Um... And I have the same book in my hand. Right, so I've even got that one on Kindle as well. Excuse me, what this talking's giving me wind. And this is this one. I've even got that on the Kindle. So this is, oh, this is where the, one of the Happy Glastonbury. <laughs> there you go, a wee plug. Happy Glastonbury, I love it. The goddess mugs are in there, are amazing. This picture is actually one of the mugs. I've not got it, but it's so beautiful. If you're ever in, go have a look. The mugs are gorgeous. But anyway, this is the Witch's Bible. I don't know any witch that doesn't have this. This is amazing. This was written by Janet Stewart Farrer. Now, if I do remember right, because um, I'm, I'm a quite obsessive when I go and look into people and look into things, they were in... Don't quote me if I'm wrong, because you know I'll probably get it right at some point in this 
bit of a con of the conversation. Um, they were either, I'm sure they were in with Gerald Gardner. Um, and then they went on to be the rather than the Gardnerian Wiccan, they went on to be the Alexandrian Wiccans. Um, and they moved over to Ireland. So bad. I do know things. I'm having a hormonal moment, right? Um, and and it's just through their love of their craft, they wanted to document um, like a, a not more up to date version and the things that they were doing, and they wanted to share that with everybody. They just like I, I know being wicked and being a part of a coven, and I've never been a part of a coven, so I I don't know. I've always been very eclectic. I call myself an eclectic pagan or an eclectic witch, um, and I've always been solitary. Um, I do maybe attach, you know, have people that I know and we maybe do things together, but I don't, it's not a ritualistic thing, it's not something that we do all the time. So, um, and, I, and, I, and they just felt like everybody needed to know things and I really love them for doing that. I think that was fab, so thank you. Um, so everything you need to know is here. The Sabbaths, Casting and Banishing the Magic Circle, Complete Book of Shadows, the Great Rite, Initiation Rites, Consecration Rites, Spells, Witches' Tools, Witchcraft and Sex, Running a Coven, Clairvoyance, Astral Projection. Uh, projection. This collection includes two books in one volume, Eight Sabbaths for Witches and The Witches' Way, and is the most comprehensive and revealing work on the principles, rituals and beliefs of modern witchcraft. So it is a fab and it's a fab book and it's a must have. I think when, when anybody comes to me and they'll say, I love what you do, I love the way that you are, I've loved watching you evolve over the years. Can you help me? I would love to find out more. And I do kind of tend to say, go and get the Witch's Bible. Go and get it and read it. It's such an amazing book. Um, so that is just some of the books that I have that I could show you all day. Uh, if you want to see another video with some more books, let me know. Just give me a wee comment. Message me. Um, you'll be able to find me over on Facebook as well. Um, you know, I can happily... I'm just looking over here at some of them. I'll happily share um, more of my thoughts and more of my loves with you. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed it, please give me a wee thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and share. We love it when you share. You know, um, if you think that maybe other people would enjoy watching my content, then give them a wee share. Um, or give me a wee share with them even. Um, and thank you for joining me. And I'll see you again very soon.